Hey guys, welcome into today's video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Carrie. I'm gonna be playing with some new makeup releases. My hair is like looking a little crazy back in the viewfinder. What is one to do here? And I also have this pretty like colorful top on and I feel like it's like distracting. Anyway, back to the makeup. So we had a couple of new releases in Sephora. I got the Kosas Glow IV Vitamin Fused Skin Enhancer. So I wanna try this. I've seen a couple of creators put this out and say, mm, I don't know. And I had already ordered it. So I'm gonna give it a shot and see how it is. I did pick up a Mendy Moment blush from Colfi. I guess this is like a fairly new brand in Sephora and then this was a new release so it's just a, a liquid or cream blush and then LYS launched some new lip products. They had the moisture matte lipstick and it also came with the lip liners. I only picked up the lipstick. I didn't pick up the lip liner. I actually have like the Bobbi Brown Skin Full Coverage Concealer. This launched, I don't know, probably four months ago at this point, but this is just a mini and I wanted to try this today. I also picked up the Bobbi Brown, like I think this is like the Lunar New Year collection, Lux Eyeshadow Quad, and I've had this for a while and I really, really want to try it. I also picked up some products from Kiko Milano. They had like a Valentine's Day collection and I picked up one of their Matchy Souls Duo. This is a blush and highlighter duo and they have literally some of the best like unique lip products and I got two of them and you guys I think you're really gonna enjoy these these are pretty fun I also picked up from Ulta the fractal eye paint from about face that's it in a nutshell let's hop right into it I wish they would slow down at this time of year and putting out new makeup releases because I am getting fatigued there is just so much I could probably sit down and film like four or five videos of all the new makeup that I have from the new releases I'm gonna need to get on like a no buy or a low buy here pretty soon and start getting a little bit more selective I I've been trying because I just have my eyebrows on and not anything on my base like I did moisturize but that's it I don't have anything else on, no primer or anything like that. And I'm assuming that you can use this as a primer. We'll see how glowy it is and if it's more like a highlighter. So this is the Kosas Glow IV Vitamin Infused Skin Enhancer. This one is in the shade Revive. It says sheer, very light champagne. This is a 12 month shelf life. It's made in the USA. I've seen people say that this was really sparkly and it looks kind of sparkly in the package. It says it's infused with a word I can't pronounce vitamin D, vitamin K, glow all over or wherever you feel it, use alone, mix or layer with foundation. So I think this is definitely gonna be a pretty like super glowy product. I know that these are like really popular right now. And I know that Kosas like has a tendency to not use preservatives in their products. And so a lot of them are like cruelty vegan and all of that and they tend to go bad. So this being one fluid ounce, I feel like you would have to use this more to mix in with your foundation then you could just use it kind of like on the high points of your face otherwise this just is a lot of product it's not a runny formula it's pretty stiff let's rub this in and see what kind of finish it gives it has a little bit of a tint as you can see it has kind of a weird smell in my opinion it smells a little bit like paint like it's not giving off good vibes and i think that a little bit goes a long way you can see the sheen but I don't see any glitters or anything in it. It is like tacky though. It does have like a very tacky finish to it, but it almost kind of seems like it's like not sinking into my pores. Like I almost feel like I can kind of just see it on my skin as opposed to like it just creating a sheen. So I feel like I don't need to focus this on the high points of my face. I'm gonna take about that much and I'm going to just apply it to this side and see what it does. It has a terrible smell. It does not smell good. I'm telling you, it smells like paint. Uh, maybe this is what people were talking about, that it's just weird. Like it has a cast to it, right? Like it's got a tint. I was pretty sure I got this in the lightest shade. That's not always the case, but it looks like, how do I describe this? Metallic. Like I put something metallic all over my face. Doesn't it look that way? Here's nothing. And then here's the side that I put on. And here is it on my hand. It doesn't have any shimmers in it, but because it has like a color or a tint to it, that's what makes it look a little bit metallic. Like I'm looking at it on my nose and it just looks like color and not in a good way. So I'm gonna take this much on this side. The smell though is like unsettling. Like I don't like it. Yeah, it's like it doesn't absorb into my palm and so it looks like this pasty, pasty, just 
pasty metallicness. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. It's not like sticky still. Like, it's dried down. It's maybe like a little bit tacky, but not overly tacky. I'm just, I don't know if I'm convinced about this yet. Like, I feel like I need to sit here and let it sit before I go in with foundation. I don't know. I'm just thinking this is not gonna sit well under foundation. We'll see though. I'm just gonna go in with my Bobbi Brown Skin Long Wear Weightless Foundation. I do like this. I think this one settles into my fine lines a little bit more, but it plays nicely on the rest of my face. I have mine in the shade Ivory. I'm just going to quickly like apply this. I don't have a new foundation right now. Let's do half the face with a sponge, actually. And I'm just using a clean e.l.f. Total Face Sponge. I want to see how one side plays on top of this. I told you that the smell was a little unsettling and I don't usually get bothered by scents in products very often unless it's like pretty strong or just not pleasing. So it might not be something that I like to reach for just because that smell is like, I don't know, not my favorite. It seems nice so far, like it's sitting nicely. We'll see how it like lasts on top of this, but it didn't look like it's disturbed the foundation in any way. I used to love this foundation. I just figured since we're using the concealer that we might as well go in with this and I haven't used it in a minute too. So I'm trying to pull it back out and give it a little bit of love, but it usually plays well with all of my primers. All right, I'm not noticing anything funny. Like the foundation isn't sitting strangely on top of the Kosas Skin Enhancer. It seems to be playing pretty nicely. So we'll see how it, I don't know, we'll see how it continues to wear. And then let's move on into the concealer. I know that this had a little bit of hype and even people with dry skin were saying that this was a really like good full coverage concealer, but looked a little bit heavy, so I didn't wanna pick it up. But this actually came, I think, free with purchase, if I'm not mistaken, when I picked up the Lux eyeshadow quad. So I was like, all right, we're gonna try it. This is like a really interesting doe foot applicator. It's like pinched, looks like a flower like a tulip, is that what I'm thinking of? So it's actually holding quite a bit of product in that little, what do you call it? I don't know, in that little curve. So that's kind of interesting. Let's apply it to my left side. I always call that my, my darker eye because of my scar. What shade is this in? Cool sand. Okay. It looks a little bit dark, a little bit orange maybe. It did a good job concealing. Like I think it's pretty good coverage. I don't know if I would call it medium coverage. It's a thick consistency, definitely. And it's very tacky on the skin. Like I can feel it. Even though it says cool sand, it definitely looks like it's more orange toned. Like it's almost more warm toned than cool. I would say though, like it's a medium consistency. Like I wouldn't say that it felt overly thick, but it's not like a thin formula. All right, we're going into the other eye. It's almost like you have to use that side that's like holding all of the product because like that's where it all is. Let's just kind of take it down to bridge my nose. The swatch on the back of my hand is already almost dry, so I can tell it like has a quick dry time on it. I'm gonna take it just like across my eye as well. I think it's pretty decent coverage. So I can say that about it. It's really just gonna be how does it wear and like whether or not it creases under my eye because it's not worth having a good full coverage concealer if it just goes super dry on you or starts to crease. That kind of just defeats the purpose. But it's very tacky. Like it's really sticky formula. I'm just gonna set all over with my Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Powder in Butter. I don't have a new bronzer, so I'm gonna go into my Tom Ford Glow Bronzer in 02 Terra. Because the Kiko has a powder blush and a powder highlighter in here, I think what I wanna do is do the cream blush from Colfi and then go over it with the powder blush just to kind of set it. This is the first time I'm trying anything from Colfi. I think they did come out with like some eyeliners like a couple of months ago and people were picking those up and actually saying that they were really good quality, but I know nothing about this brand. I did not try those. So this will be my first product. This is the component. It's just a little squeezy tube. This does have 10 milliliters in it. This is made in the USA. So I'm looking at this and this is like one of the very first makeup products that I've purchased in a while that has no shelf life listed on it anywhere. This consistency reminds me of a blush that I have that is like Korean makeup, like K-Beauty. It's just very moussey and it's thick. 
but like the one that I have that's also like this has a similar texture to it and it's also very pigmented, very thick, very long lasting, almost staining on the cheeks, but it's that same moussey texture. I just pulled it out. It's from I'm Neem, it's their pet balm. This one's in a pretty deep shade, so I don't use it that often, but it's like the same kind of component. Let me swatch it here. So can you see like how very similar in the consistency it is? I think I got that I'm Neem one off of Amazon. Yeah, they're just, like an identical consistency. Like they feel exactly the same, but I feel like the one from I Meme was like maybe seven or eight dollars. I was not expecting that to be the consistency, but kind of now that I know, like the I Meme one comes in a lot of different shades and you can really like dupe this product. Like they already have this in K-Beauty. It's a lot less expensive, but we're still gonna try it anyway. If I do like this though, I'll let you guys know in the description box and I'll link this as well because I think that this is like almost identical in terms of the way that it felt doing the swatch. And so like you don't need this if you have this. How I'm gonna apply it is I'm just going to rub it into the back of my hand like this. I'm just gonna take a stipple brush and I'm gonna stipple it on. I'm gonna use what's on the brush for the other side before I go in and diffuse this out because yeah, it's just like the other one. It's crazy pigmented. Let me work. I feel like my hair is just getting caught in everything right now. Don't you hate when that happens? Like it's just one of those days where you're like, dude, like stay back. So a little bit goes a really long way. I do think it dries pretty quickly. So you gotta work faster. And so just pick up and lay down what you're willing to blend in one cheek at a time. That's already like my recommendation because right now it's kind of just like looking like a fat stripe. I mean, it's really pigmented, but yeah, I mean, work, work one side at a time. Like that's gonna be how you have to do this without it drying down significantly on your cheek because the dry time is very fast. Let's go into the Kiko Milano one. This is the Powerful Love Matchy Souls Duo Compact Blush and Highlighter. Kiko Milano has pretty much rebranded. A lot of their stuff went on sale and then they pulled it from stock and they've been coming out with a lot of new collections lately and I've been eyeing them. Like I've liked the way they've looked and so I've been ordering quite a bit of Kiko Milano stuff and so far, all of the quality seems super, super good. I don't hear a lot of people talking about Kiko Milano. I know that they've like had their time, I think, but not like in the mainstream, like nothing is going viral, but some of their stuff just looks super, super good. And the quality so far is fantastic. It's in a cute little compact. Like I'm loving the fact that this is like, I don't know, it's cute, it's pink, it's different, but it's small. And it also comes with a mirror on the inside. So here are the shades. Oh, this is in Falling in Mauve. It has like a champagne -y highlighter and a very mauve -y blush. The blush is just a matte finish. Feels really, really creamy. Really looks airbrushing on my skin. And the highlighter as well, super creamy. These swatches make me wanna die. Like they really look super nice. They felt really good. I'm telling you guys, Kiko Milano is really, really good quality. They're not like overly expensive in comparison to a lot of brands. If you guys aren't familiar with Kiko Milano, I'm pretty sure they're a, an Italian makeup brand. So all of their stuff is made in Italy. So, you know, you do get very good quality Italian powder products. I don't know if there's any like helping this blush, like if this mauve is gonna do anything on top of this, but I mean, we're gonna set it down. We're gonna try. I think I'll just kind of take it like across my nose a little bit and down. That's what we'll do. Maybe a little bit on the forehead. Might as well. But yeah, it just, all of their blushes, because I have tried their holiday release blushes that came out, they're so creamy and pigmented and like staining on the cheeks and they just look airbrushed. I mean, they're just so beautiful that I'm like shocked that I didn't try them sooner. All right, let's go into this beautiful highlighter. I'm gonna take this just really fat like ColourPop brush, put it on, okay. It's blinding, but it's that not that kind that like sits on top of your skin. 
it looks like it sinks in nicely and looks more natural. Even though it's blinding, it doesn't have any like real sparkles or shimmers in it. Just a nice natural sheen. I'm telling you, Kiko Milano, they put out some bomb stuff. We're moving on into the eyeshadow. I'm really excited to swatch this. This was the Luxe Eyeshadow Quad. It was the one that released, I think for Lunar New Year. So it was like in January, so not that long ago. And it has such beautiful packaging. It looks so gorgeous. The quality just looked fantastic. They look like shimmery and beautiful. These are a baked formula. They're all like shimmery toppers, basically. I don't know if I can create like a full look out of them, but this one in metal rose feels like a satin finish. It's the like taupey color. So there are the swatches there. Some of these are very light reflecting and they all felt like different formulas. This is like a satin and it doesn't have any glitters in it. So this is the one that I would use as a transition shade. Before I screw up this whole eye look, let's take out this fractal eye paint from About Face. This is the Glitter Mousse Eyeshadow. I have mine in the shade Tin Pan Alley, which I think was actually um like a champagne -y color. Here's the component. Has a little bit of shimmers to it, I think. I think it's blurry, sorry. I mean, it looks gorgeous. Like it has the sheen to it. It was very opaque. I mean, I hope that it translates that way on the eyes, but it looks nice on swatching it. It has a really quick dry time, very, very fast. And so like, it's not moving a ton of the product around. It's really good about staying where you put it. So that means twofold that you have to work a little bit quicker Ooh, it's staining, look at that. You have to work a little bit quicker and put it precisely where you want it because it's not gonna be like a very movable formula. But that's also a bad thing because then you don't have a lot of time to work to get it to like blend in. Like you better just be very precise when you're applying it. I think what we have to do is apply this first because I'm afraid of like putting it on top of the powder and then messing it up. So I've actually picked up these like three piece silicone eyeshadow brushes and I'm really interested to try these for applying the eyeshadow like on my lid because I, I have such big fingers and my nails are usually pretty long that I have such a hard time like getting on my eye so often that I wanted to check these out. I saw someone else using these. And so I just placed the order for this on Amazon. And I think that's probably how I'm going to apply this. Like I'm gonna take this on the back of this silicone brush instead of using the applicator itself. See how that works. It's not half bad. And it's like a nice shape to really get your crease. Like if you have hooded lids like I do you can get in there like pretty precisely. And it's picking up a good amount of product and making it very easy to blend in without, I don't know, without like going too high above my actual crease. That was a nice tool, but this dries down very fast, very, very fast. Like it's already to the point where it's like hard, in, hard to move in certain spots. Yeah, this is what I was talking about, you guys. Like, it's not forgiving. Like, you have to be super precise with this. Like, it's staying wherever the H-E double hockey sticks that you put it. And so this one, I just went wild on the inner corner and I did it way too high. <sighs> I'm gonna take this one in metal rose, which is the more like satin one and I'm going to use it entirely in the crease. This is not going well for me. Like, I have to say. Like, it's not fully dried on my lid, and so here's me trying to cover it up with some of the baked shadows from this palette, and all it's doing is like picking up chunks of it and moving it to places that I don't want it. Like, it's not necessarily covering up the fractal eye paint itself, like, can you guys see? It's just, it's not playing well. Like, it's something that you'd have to kind of wear on its own, and it's not blendable. And it's like, it's like adhering to like my creases. Does that make sense? Like, I have like extra skin because I have hooded eyes, I'm 38, and so I just feel it like clinging to this extra skin in like the worst way possible on my eyes. Like, I am just hating this. 
playing with other shadows. I was liking it for a minute and now I'm just, I'm like, dude, this whole thing needs to come off. All right, let me explain. I had to start all over. There's a lot of glitter in that fractal eye paint and it's really pretty, but again, I could tell just on the swatch like what was gonna go down, which was it was either gonna be like perfect because it dried in just enough time for you to work and get it like precisely where you wanted it and then, you know, it wasn't gonna move. But it had like a weird dry time that was a little bit trickier to like lay down and then put anything on top of it. It just wasn't like allowing anything to go over it. It was just peeking through, but it was, it wasn't meshing well with the baked palette. It was like I said, just like really tough and just like tugging on my eyelids. It just wasn't good. It's not plug and play. Let's just be honest. So I'm going to play with this palette. Since we, we had time, we tested it and we're moving on. So let's go into this palette and let's do this shade in the crease. I'm going to take this citrine one potentially in the outer corner and Moonstone is going all over my lid for sure. It is not really buildable. It's more of like a sheer formula, which I, I anticipated not only from the shade, which looks like a little brownish gray, but also because it's just this like satin finish baked formula. I'm going into citrine. I hope I'm making the right decision. This looks like more glitter than anything. These are almost all more topper shades than they are for like a whole eye look. But you know what? I like me a shimmery eye and so I'm usually not afraid to like use a palette to build a look that's all shimmery. All right, we're going into the Moonstone one. I don't think this is mimicking your finger exactly. I definitely think that there's something to the warmth of your finger. Let me take my finger and see if this deepens up. Yeah, see, it's just like you can't, I don't know, you can't replace the finger. Plenty of fallout on this. I'm gonna use my finger on the left eye. I don't I don't wanna sit there and mess around with the silicone brush. I think the silicone brush would be really good for like different shades, like not a baked formula, but a legitimate like cream or powder shimmer. Cream, cream base or powder based shimmer. I actually think that these have a decent base to them. They have like color underneath their shimmer, so that's nice. And I think the look is nice, it's just really shimmery. That's it. Really good topper shades. I did not put my Kosas IV Glow Enhancer back on. It had enough time to start doing something funny if it was going to, and it didn't. So I actually think that it sits nicely under the foundation. Do I think that it was actually doing anything underneath it? No, not really. Like I didn't love the metallic cast. I didn't love the consistency. I thought that it was like okay like i think it made the foundation look heavier and so i wasn't really excited to throw this back on when i reapplied my makeup so i didn't um i gave you my thoughts on it i mean i'll keep testing it i just i don't like it not very much now the tom ford bronzer going back on the cheeks and we're just going to test out the kiko milano like powder products now we're not going to put the other blush back on i think it's good i do i actually do i think it's very similar to the eye meme i would say like complete dupe i just think that you have to be in the mood for that like you have to work one cheek at a time and go in with the smallest amount of product so Going into the blush now so we can like really test the pigmentation and the finish of this blush. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be really airbrushing and pigmented and beautiful because all of Kiko's stuff is. My favorite is this highlighter though. This highlighter, I'm telling you guys, it's so gorgeous. Like it's a melty into your skin, doesn't look funny. Like this highlighter is so freaking beautiful. I'm gonna throw on my Lawless, the one and done mascara really quickly. And then we just have lip products left. And I might not put them all on, but we're totally swatching them all. We're gonna look at these Kiko ones. They are so cool, you guys are gonna die. Okay, let's go over the ones from Kiko Milano first. Again, from the like powerful love collection for Valentine's that they put out. This one was the hydrating lip balm. And I feel like I should have put this one on first. 
I don't think this has a shade. Like I think it's just one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just one. Here's the packaging. Wait till you guys see this, okay? Okay. Um, yeah, I remember when everyone was going crazy over like the Dior one? Um, why? You don't need to when you've got Kiko. Look at this. This is the only reason I bought this. Look at this gorgeousness. Oh, I can't. I can't. We're putting it on right now. It doesn't have any, like no sparkles came off on the swatch though. Cause it doesn't have like a lot of sparkles in the core. Oh, that's awesome. Oh my gosh, if I had known this was like not pigmented, delightful little balm with all of these sparkles, I would have put this on first. You guys, was it Dior that put out that like balm that was just like that and people were on the hunt for it? Like, I feel like it was, maybe it wasn't Dior, I don't know, but I feel like Kiko's got it for less expensive. So the next one that I picked up was the Creamy Lipstick in 01, but this one too, you guys, wait for it. I'm sorry. If packaging and presentation gets you like it does me, like, isn't that cool? Like, I know that's probably easy to make. You just swirl in a bunch of colors when you're like throwing the lipstick together, but I don't know. Like, I don't see anyone else really making these. You actually see both colors on the swatch. And so I imagine you kind of rub your lips together. Mm, so creamy. It's a little bit light for my skin tone, but it's that like perfect pinky peachy nude shade, isn't it? Like for someone who had like a, a deeper skin tone or even if like I wore like a darker liner with it, it would look really pretty, mm, but it's super creamy. I'm taking it off because we're going into LYS. All right, let's talk about this bad boy. So this is the Moisture Matte Lipstick. It has the Chia Seed Oil Hyaluronic Acid Maxi Lip. Visibly plumps and reduces the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Oh, we'll see. It does have really interesting package. Mine's in the shade Moody. Here's the packaging. It's in the standard like LYS Diamond. But the cool thing about this is it's like got faux leather on it. Like the Givenchy lipsticks. I opened it and I was like, Wow, okay, all right, LYS for your really cheap price point. I mean, cheap for Sephora anyway. It's just this teeny tiny circle bullet, and I am definitely interested in feeling a comfortable matte formula, because that's usually what I go for. That's like usually my jam. It's a very deep brown shade. I'm wondering like what compelled me to get this. I'm gonna see if I can put this on with no lip liner, and just like, because it's just so little, like, can you get really precise? I think you can. Can I not make a mess? It's so comfortable. It's creamy and it's comfortable matte formula. It's like a satin finish. I love when they say like moisturizing matte formula, but it's just straight a satin finish. So I'll tell you guys about how I feel about everything. I, I talked about the Kosas a little bit, actually a lot of it. I just feel like it definitely made the foundation look heavier on my skin than the foundation actually normally looks. And that was probably after about a half an hour of wear. So I feel like it's just gonna make it look worse as like the day goes on. That's the impression that I'm getting from this. And it was like a metallic cast. I don't know how else to describe it for you guys unless you could kind of like see what I was talking about when it was on. It just, it looked funny. It's just not something that I would really like to wear under my makeup for its really thick consistency. I think that was kind of a fail for Kosas. I didn't enjoy it. So far, I don't see the concealer creasing. So it's, it's good. I just don't think that it's the most hydrating full coverage concealer I have in my collection, but I don't, I don't have anything from Bobbi Brown that I dislike. It's just not my favorite. This Colfi blush, I did like it. You guys saw how pigmented it was. I looked like a straight up clown. You gotta go in with a light hand, but who cares? It was super, super staining, but I think you can get it less expensive from I'm Meme because they already have the exact same 
formula and it's a lot less expensive. Like I said, I will link this down in the description box. Lux Eye Quad. I've never tried a Bobbi Brown eyeshadow formula before, so I really like this. What I find over some of the other shimmers and like Lux Quads, like I was saying, is that I think this has a little bit more base to the pigmentation and so I was really enjoying it. I like the range of shades. Sometimes they're too similar, like Chanel does that quite often where the shades are just like so similar. You're like, well, okay, shit. Like I, you could have just left that whole shade out because I already had one in here. Whereas I think these two um, that are the most similar are just really different. Like they're different finishes, but this is like more gold and that's more orange, if that makes sense. So I don't dislike that. I'm just most impressed with the Kiko Milano though. I think this highlighter is damn amazing. I, I can't say anything bad about Kiko Milano. It's just that nobody talks about them and they're what I like to reach for most often in like my personal daily life because they're just so good. And all of their lip products are awesome too. Like I have another one that was like the sparkly red lip. It's so good. These are so good and, and nobody talks about them. So I don't know if anybody knows, but yeah, if you're a fan of packaging and like you like this sparkly nonsense, it was so comfortable and creamy when I put it on. This from LYS, as far as like their first lip launch, I think this was really cute. I think the packaging was cute and adorable. So far, it's it's a hit. Like it wasn't too expensive and it feels very comfortable. And yeah, I agree. It doesn't like overemphasize my lip lines. So that one's a hit. So a couple of duds, couple of hits. I'm out of here, you guys, and I will catch you all in my next video. Bye.